don't you just lift up your prayers to him this morning? Come on, just as, as you stand there, as your hands are lifted, as your heart is lifted, come on, lift your prayers to him today. Come on, present yourself before our God. Tell him that you need him. Tell him how much you love him. Come on, engage with him this morning. Commune with him this morning. Oh, Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for who you are. We thank you, Lord, that your word promises that you never leave, you never forsake us. So God, we stand here this morning confident, confident in who you are, confident in your word, confident in your power, confident in your love. Oh, we stand here, Lord, ready, ready, God. So far.
today, because come on, if you need a miracle, if you need God to move, come on, I want you to present your need before Him today and trust. grab your seat. But it's great to see your beautiful faces this morning. And a big welcome to anyone who's come specifically to support one of our amazing families that are dedicating their children this morning. Such a special, special day. Hey, if you are new and you've recently come to Horizon and you'd love to get more connected, we would love to connect with you as well. And uh, one of the easiest ways to do that is to just let us know who you are. Let us know where you're at and what you're looking for and how we can help you and you know how we can connect with you. And the best way to do that is through our online hello card. And uh, you'll see a, a, a address on the screen there, hz.church forward slash hello. And uh, if you fill that out uh, just online on your phone, or you can go out to reception and fill out one of our cards there. One of our team will get in touch with you this week. And uh, as well as that, if you are new, we'd love to invite you to our guest lounge. And we have that in our mornings after our services, just through these doors and got a tea and a coffee with your name on it and some snacks. And it's a great opportunity to meet some of our team and uh, get connected. And so if that's you, we'd love to have you connect that way. And if you're online, there'll be a hello button that you can press right now. And if you follow that link, you'll be able to fill out those details and one of our team will get in touch with you this week because we love having you. 
with us at church. Well, church, we are about to partake in a moment that is very significant, one of the most significant things that we do as a church community. And that is to stand with families as they dedicate their children to God. And so this morning we have two families dedicating children. And so can we please welcome to the stage the Craddocks and the Pelosumas. Come up here, you guys. How good is that? Brilliant. Two amazing families. And uh, as I said, what a special thing for us to do as a church, to stand with these guys and their beautiful, beautiful children. We've got a couple of our pastors and pastoral teams standing with each of these couples. We'll get you guys to step forward. There you go. And uh, we might start over here. Why don't you guys all shift down this way? So we're in the, this is the middle of the stage here. There we go. Look at that. This is for our online family, many of which are tuning in from right around the world today. We might start with uh, Matt and Aziza. Could you introduce this beautiful family and the child that's being dedicated today? So this morning we have Henry Fox Craddock who's brought his parents, Anik and Chris. And uh, this is a really special moment because um, Anik's family are from Germany and they're all tuning online this morning to watch. So, hello. Wow, why don't we welcome Anik's family from Germany. Great to have you with us. And some of Anik's family, when they've been visiting in Australia, have been a part of our church. And so we love you guys. It's great to have you with us. And we have this next beautiful family here, Ter. Yes, Tim, Fee and I have the honour of standing with and praying for Talia Leilani Peleseyuma. Is that right? With, when we're praying and standing in faith with Bell and Junior. Fantastic. Well, this is a, a very special moment, church, and something we don't want to rush through. This is a significant part of being the church family of these beautiful people. And uh, we see in Jesus, in His life through Scripture, the pattern that we are actually following today. You see, in Luke chapter 2, Joseph and Mary, Jesus' parents, presented Jesus at the temple. It says, when, they, when the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took Him to Jerusalem to present Him to the Lord. And you know, later Jesus was baptised by His own choice. And as a church, we really believe that in Scripture we see children being dedicated to God, which is the choice of a parent. And parents to say, we will give ourselves to raising this child in the ways of God. And then later when a child is raised to an age where they're able to make their own faith decision, that's where we see baptism. You know, uh, today there's many things that this represents and I wanna speak specifically to the parents right now, but there's three things that I wanna draw our attention to. And the first one is that this is a thank God moment. You know, one of the things when Jesus was brought to the temple, a man called Simeon, a lady called Anna, they both spontaneously started praising God, thanking God for this gift. And you know, I know for each of you guys, and uh, having been on the journey with you guys, you know how much of a gift these children are. And they are a gift from God. And this moment, first and foremost, is a thank God moment. Thank you for this gift of a child. Thank you for giving us the honour and the opportunity to raise this child. So firstly, it's a thank God moment. Secondly, it's a help us God moment. And uh, you know, the, the Jewish prayers that Joseph and Mary would have prayed at the beginning and the end of each day, begin with something called the Shema Yisrael. And it comes out of Deuteronomy chapter six. I'm gonna read it to you, which is what they would have prayed literally every single day. And it says this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be with you on your hearts. Impress them on your children. That word impress them means sharpen, to strengthen, to add to to sharpen. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them to your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Do you know, this is a help me God moment, help us God moment. You know, one of the things you realise when you become a parent is that you don't actually, you know, own a child as property. You only steward a life and we need God's help. And this is the moment where you are saying, God, if I'm gonna raise my child to know you, to know the things of God, I need your help. And finally, the last one is a we will God moment. And this is where church, we come in. We are the community that stand with you as parents and say, we will stand with you 
and help you raise these trials. One of the funniest scriptures for me, the whole Bible and in particular this story in Luke chapter two is when Jesus at 12 years old goes to the temple and goes missing. And it says his parents walked an entire day before they realised Jesus was missing. And we read that in our current context and we just think negligent parents, call for family and community services, what is going on here? But what it actually shows us is how a community worked in Jesus' day. Because you didn't just look after your own children, but as a community, the children of your community came with you. And that's why they thought that He was with their family because they trusted their family to care for their, for their child. And we today, we say we will stand with you as you raise these children and as you commit them to God and you go on your journey until the day when they're able to make their own decision for faith, which is amazing. So I'm gonna pray for them right now. And as I pray, we're gonna ask these uh, pastoral team to pray over these beautiful children. And church, can I just ask, as a sign of solidarity and you know, being with them, can we just extend our hands just as a sign that says, I'm with you, I'm praying right now for these beautiful, beautiful children. So join me right now. Lord, we just thank You so much for the significance of this moment. God, for the significance of what is happening right now as these parents choose before their community, their faith community, to dedicate their children to God. We thank You that this is a moment to honour You and to thank You, God, for the gift that children are. To thank You for giving us the opportunity to raise these beautiful children, for trusting us and trusting them into our care. Lord, we pray right now for these beautiful kids. God, we ask You right now for Your help, for Your grace. God, we thank You right now that You are with this beautiful family, these beautiful families as they dedicate these kids. You're gonna strengthen them, help them, give them wisdom, give them guidance. And God, we just as a church community, we say we will stand with them in faith. We will support them. We will encourage their kids. We will provide an environment where they are safe and they are able to grow into everything You've created them to be. And we thank You, Jesus, for these beautiful kids. And so right now, Lord, we honour You and we ask You to bless these beautiful kids in Jesus' wonderful Name. Amen. Amen. Church, can you say amen to that? Fantastic. Well, we have got some flowers and certificates for you guys. Come on, church, let's give it up for these guys right now. And uh, we are so, so, so happy for you all. And I know you guys will be celebrating with family after the service. And so right now, church, as these guys head off the stage, why don't we give them another massive round of applause. Congratulations. So special. And we're now gonna hear from Ter as we uh, come around our tithes and offerings. Yeah, so good. I love baby dedications. It's such a great time. Yes, yeah, so and now we're gonna continue in our worship. My name is Ter. And I'm on the care team here at Horizon Church, which is so exciting. Um, we're coming around to tithes and offerings. If you are new or visiting, uh, please, there's no under, under no obligation to give, but this is for us who love to give and who call Horizon home. Uh, there's many ways to give that will come up on the screen. And if you're watching in our online community, there's a give button that might pop up. And we also have in every Horizon um, location, we have a give box. If you want to give that way, it'll be fantastic. Well, I really wanted to tell you about, about my week last week. I love serving in church. And one of the things I was, did last week was stand on the welcome doors. And so many people come through and I love it. And with the elder gentleman, he walks up the stairs and he walks past me and I yell out to him, welcome, sir, welcome to church. Because he was kind of that sir type person. And he, he said hello and he, he was sort of walked and he stopped. He doubled back and he, he looked at me and he said, he said, hi, what's your name? And I said, my name's Tara. I said, what's your name? He said, my name's Niels. And he looks at me and he says, how long you've you been coming here, Tara? And I nervously turned and said, oh, two or three months. <laughs> I said, Niels, how long have you been coming here? He said, since 1975. <laughs> I love that. We joked how he's a part of the structure of the building and then he, walk, he sh walks off into, I don't know, I'm sure if you're here today, Niels, but you walked off in the service and it dawned on me. You know, the Psalm 92 verse th 13, it says, those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. How's this? They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. Yes, some of you here, you have been around that long. You have been planted in the church. It made me think, I 
want to be like Niels. I want to be planted like some of those other people in this church. I could look around the room and name some names. I started to ask a few names. And there were so many names that came out of like others who have been planted. I want to be like that. I want to be planted. When I, we just did baby dedications and we, we launch people into life and we pray for them, the blessing and the flourishment of life. But what about the other end? Say planted. And when I give, I'm giving to my future self. 45 years from now, 2066, I'll be shuffling up the stairs and I'll be like, how long have you been here? And I've been here since 2021. And I pray to that end. Father God, we lift up every single gift given to You, Lord. May we be planted. May we be flourishing in the house. May we be green. And, and Lord, may You just fill us right now. We thank You in Jesus' mighty Name. Amen. Amen. Now. Hello and welcome to Horizon Church. We are so excited that you're with us today whether online or in person. If you're new or you've changed the details, we've made it super simple for you to stay connected. It is so simple. Go grab your phone, head to hz.church forward slash hello. And for our online family, click the hello button in the chat below. This will get you connected with a pastor or a leader. It'll mean you start receiving our weekly e-news and it will help you get plugged into a life group or department of our church. And keep you up to date with all our key dates and events throughout the year. Feel free to fill that in now as we check out what's coming up at Horizon Church. from our Horizon Cafe, head to hz.church forward slash cafe or scan the QR code. Place your order, then pay and collect at our cafe after the service. In 2021, we are launching Horizon Online Campus. This is a place for people to connect with the heart and vision of Horizon Church and become part of the family. We're removing the barriers to the gospel and supporting them on their faith journey. It's about seeing transformation in people's homes, on their morning commute and even on their lunch break. There are no outsiders in the Kingdom of God. Online Campus opens the door for anyone to come to the table to connect with their Heavenly Father and a community who loved them. We have an amazing night planned for the kids tonight. We have Brave Arcade. For dinner, it's sliders, and for dessert, it's fruit and custard. All right, 
Awesome stuff. Good morning, everyone. It's great to see you this morning. Lots of great things coming up at Horizon Church. And uh, next Sunday, we have got Pastor Vicki Simpson, who's going to be preaching at all of our services. So that's double AM, PM. It's going to be amazing. Who's coming to all services to next week? I was going to say tomorrow. Next week, it's going to be absolutely amazing. Welcome to all of our online community. I hope you've enjoyed the service so far. A couple of technical glitches at the start, but we've been able to resolve that, and I hope you've been blessed so far. Have you had a fantastic week? Yeah, Yeah, come on, who's had a great week? Let's give it up for Jesus. So good. Uh, And of course, I'd like to echo uh, Pastor Tim's welcome to all of those who are visiting for the child dedications. Hope that you have enjoyed church so far this morning, and welcome to the family all the way from Germany. I uh, hope that you've been blessed so far as well. Good stuff. Well, we're going to get into the Word of God. And uh, before I get you to turn to the Scriptures, I want to have a quick reflection on last week. Who was blessed by the sermon last week? Come on, about four of us. Who was blessed by the message last week? If you haven't had an opportunity to listen to last week's message, I'd encourage you to grab it on podcast. You can go on to Horizon Church YouTube. And uh, you can grab that as well. And so I preached last week uh, because we've been reaching into ever-widening circles, our field of faith, amen. And I preached on Acts chapter 8, which is the story of Philip the evangelist and how the Lord reached him to use, uh, reach, uh, used him, excuse me, to reach the Ethiopian man. And we looked at that and we looked at how God used that story to teach us and equip us and sharpen us to be effective evangelists. And so, uh, who remembers Shem, Ham, and Japheth? And I hope that was a blessing to you as well. I'm a studier of the Word. I hope you are as well, uh, digging deep into the Scriptures. I love mining, revelation, amen. This morning, we're gonna continue on that journey We were in Acts 8, now today I'm going to hit Acts chapter 9, and uh, we'll eventually land in Acts chapter 10 after Vicki Simpson. So this morning I want to start off talking firstly about the impact of the ministry of the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul, we know in Christian circles, it's a common understanding that He wrote 13 books of the New Testament. That is, we could say he wrote two-thirds of the books of the New Testament. What an incredible impact. Uh, We could say that his ministry has affected every single person in this room. Imagine 2,000 years later, your ministry affecting millions of people. Today, across the globe, as the sun rises, people will read his letters. They'll be impacted by the statements, the things he penned when he was in prison. And people will draw strength. Some of your favorite verses were penned by the Apostle Paul. There would have been weddings that would have taken place across the globe yesterday and they would have read the writings of the Apostle Paul from 1 Corinthians 13. Love is patient. Love is kind. We draw strength from scriptures like Philippians chapter four, verse 13, which is quite common on basketball sneakers these days. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. We draw strength from scriptures like 2 Corinthians chapter five, verse seven. We walk by faith and not by sight. How about this one? Philippians chapter one, verse 21. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. How about 2 Corinthians chapter five, verse 17? If any of us be in Christ, we are. New, oh, come on, church. If any of us be in Christ, we are new creations. All things have passed away. All things have become new. How about this one? Galatians chapter two, verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith 
in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. How about this one? (laughs) Romans chapter five, verse one, having therefore been justified by faith, we have peace with our God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And I haven't even quoted anything from First and Second Timothy, from Ephesians, Philemon's, Colossians, or the book of Titus. What an incredible man to be used by God in such a way that in some of the darkest times in our lives, we read the letters of the Apostle Paul, we drew strength, we drew courage, God gave us direction, he gave us wisdom. Paul has been known as the first great Christian theologian. And in fact, he has established for us the building blocks of faith. When you think about the millions that are now in heaven because of the ministry of the Apostle Paul, it's quite remarkable to think about, isn't it? Some people say that the Apostle Paul has second to Jesus, has had the greatest effect on world history. What a life to be used by God in such a way. But it wasn't all so the case, or rephrase it, wasn't that Paul was this man who was shaped in such a way from the time he was a child. The Apostle Paul, we know, originally as Saul. He had a dark past. He had a life that was really quite fanatical. It was extreme. Pick up the story at the book of Acts, Acts chapter seven. That's the first recorded Christian martyr. That is, of course, Stephen, the back end of Acts chapter seven. Uh, Rocks thrown at him, stoned to death. And there was a young man, the Bible says, by the name of Saul, who consented to Stephen's death. At this time, as the gospel was spreading and the church was growing, Christians started to flee. They fled Jerusalem, sought refuge in other cities. Some even moved to other nations. And there was one key man behind the persecution, Saul, later known as Paul the Apostle. Saul was angry. He was a furious man. In fact, we would say that he was an extremely violent man. This man was completely focused on one task. He had a laser-like focus, and that was destroy, crush, and subdue the spread of Christianity. Let me show you some of the verses about the man that we're talking about today. Have a look at Acts chapter eight, verse three. It's available for you on the screen. We'll we'll read a passage together a little bit later on, but look at this verse for a moment about the man that God used to change the world. Look at his past. But Saul began to destroy the church. Interesting to note the Bible doesn't say hinder the church or frustrate the church. Come on, buy in this with me today. This man was out to destroy the church. Look at how he does it. Now you know you're obsessed when you're going from house to house. Think about this for a moment. House to house. He's dragging both men and women He's not being kind about it. (laughs) He's dragging these people out of their homes because of their faith, throwing them into prison. The Greek word that is used there for the word destroy actually means to treat shamefully. He shamed people for their faith. It also means to injure, means to ravage, means to devastate. Lastly, it means to ruin. The New King James doesn't use the word destroy, it actually uses the word havoc. It says he created havoc of the church. 
in Acts chapter 22, verse four, when Paul was testifying about his conversion, he says of himself, I persecuted the followers of this way, watch this, to their death. This is a violent man. This is fanatical opposition to the purposes of God. This is a man who's consumed with a wild rage. The scripture goes on to say, arresting both men and women and throwing them into prison. Have a look at Acts chapter 22, verse 19. Paul testifying about his experience with Jesus and he's telling everybody about his past and he says, I went from one synagogue to another to imprison, watch, those, watch this, and beat those who believe in you. This man's a fanatic. This is radical opposition to Christianity. And the verse that I struggle with the most that God could take somebody like this and use him for his glory is Acts chapter 26, verse 11. Paul again testifying about his conversion experience. Many a time I went from one synagogue to another to have them punished. Watch this. And I tried to force them to blaspheme. In other words, the scripture's telling them, telling us, he forced believers to deny their faith. Imagine a man with a club, both men and women, rod in his hand. Will you deny Jesus Christ? This is the man that we're talking about today. Look at what it says of himself later on in the verse. He uses the word obsessed. I was obsessed with persecuting them that I even hunted them down in foreign cities. One thing to be local, <laughs> one thing to do what you need to do. This man compel people to blaspheme, obsessed with this idea, this notion that he needed to crush the church of Jesus Christ. This man, we could say, was the enemy of the church. This man was so passionate, so violent, that we read this morning, he hunted believers down in foreign cities, foreign lands. He was systematic. He was relentless. He was brutal in his assault on Christians. I wonder how many believers denied their faith. I wonder how many new believers who didn't have the foundations in their lives that Paul stood with a club and the, those that surrounded him. How many denied Jesus because of this man? Ironically, Saul had unwittingly been doing what his favorite teacher, Gamaliel, warned him against, fighting against God. <laughs> he now takes his campaign of terror on the road, but going to the authorities in Jerusalem, he requests a letter, and he says, I wanna go to a city called Damascus. And in order to go to this city, I need a letter so that I can go through the synagogues and find others who have become followers of Jesus. He takes a group with him. He's on a journey. And we know it as the road to Damascus. He's on a 217 kilometer journey obsessed, furious. He's out to hurt Christians, out to kill Christians if he could. 
one aim in mind, bring believers back to Jerusalem in chains. Let the reality of that sink in for a moment. Bringing believers back to Jerusalem in chains? Can you imagine that? Can you imagine what a 217 kilometer journey would look like carrying people in chains because they've chosen Jesus? This is the man that we're talking about today. This is the apostle of grace. (laughs) But as he journeys to Damascus, something remarkable happens. He began the trip determined to wipe out the message of Jesus Christ. But he ended the trip (laughs) devoted to the cause of Christ, taking that message to the earth. This encounter that we're about to read this morning has been described as a monumental event in the history of the church. Some have called this passage the most famous conversion story in history. Turn with me to the book of Acts, chapter nine, verse one. Are you ready? Meanwhile, Saul was still breeding out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that if you found any there who belonged to the way, capital W, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, Suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Isn't it good to know that when the church is persecuted, in fact, the persecution is against Christ himself. We are one with Jesus. Verse five, he recognises He's in a moment of divine glory. He says, who are you, Lord? Saul asks, I am Jesus, the one whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he had opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind, and he did not eat or drink anything. This man's world has been turned upside down. The Lord can reach the hardest heart. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called him called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord said to him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, such is the reputation of Saul. I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. And I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. 
immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. What an incredible story. What an incredible conversion. What a moment in God where the Lord supernaturally and spectacularly breaks into someone's life, has an encounter with him and his life is transformed and changed forever. Do you remember that day when you encountered the love of God? Do you remember that moment, that experience, when you experienced his love and his peace and eternal glory that changed your life forever? Here's Saul, he's on the road to Damascus. Ferocious, furious, violent. As he's journeying, the Bible says that a light flashed all around him. Later you see in Acts chapter 26, Paul describes that light in more detail and he, he refers to it as a light that was brighter than the sun. He also tells us in one of his accounts that this happened at midday. Yeah, when you're driving around during the day, sometimes you, you see people who kind of leave their headlights on. Uh, the impact of that light has very little influence on you. Why? Because there is light coming from the sun. This light was so bright. This light was so intense. This light was so glorious that it literally overpowered him and the men that were with him and he fell to the earth. He didn't fall because of heat stroke, but he fell over because he was having a personal meeting and encounter with Jesus Christ. We need to believe for our field of faith and the people who perhaps have a little bit more hardness than most to the Lord, that they will have supernatural encounters with Jesus Christ. I believe that the God that we serve is a supernatural God and He can invade situations and circumstances and if He can reach Saul, He can reach your field of faith. I'm here to stir your faith this morning for that son or that daughter, that auntie, that uncle, that mother or father that may be away from the Lord. If Jesus can reach Saul, he can reach your loved ones. He can reach your son. That's a word of faith for someone today. He can reach your family. A.W. Tozer says of this, if you have, if you have to be reasoned into Christianity, some wise fellow can reason you out of it. But if you come to Christ by a flash of the Holy Ghost, no one can ever reason you out of it. We need to declare that the people that we're believing for will have dreams in the middle of the night of the love of God reaching them, calling them home. In this encounter, the same declaration made over other key biblical figures, Abraham, Abraham, Samuel, Samuel, Simon, Simon, the same powerful repetition was declared over him, Saul, Saul. May the Lord, over this year, reach out to those that we love and we believe will come to know Him as Lord and Saviour. And they themselves will experience the repetition of the Holy Spirit. Why is it that I work next to a Christian? Why is it that when I go to the cafe, I keep bumping into Christians? <laughs> Why is it when I go to the car wash, the owner of it is a Christian? Why is it that when I go to the local shops, the lady that serves me, she seems so happy, 
I guarantee you she's a Christian. Why? Because there is a powerful repetition that's taking place. Saul, Saul. The Lord says to Saul, get up, go into the city. You'll be told what you must, what you must do. The disciple is there, we read it earlier. His name is Ananias. Ananias was called by God. He says, here I am, Lord. By the way, the name Ananias means God is gracious. How good is that? Tough man. What does God give him? He gives him grace. This is probably one of my favorite verses out of this passage. Imagine how Saul's life has been turned upside down. He's a murderer. Destroying Believers, asking believers to blaspheme. Imagine the change in his thinking. He's wrestling with his experience. And we see a change take place in Saul. Acts chapter nine, verse 11. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man, this is to Ananias, ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. Watch this. For he is praying. God can do that in your loved ones. He can cause a radical turnaround. There are some things you can't even say to people because of their opposition to faith and towards Christianity, but I know someone who can invade their circumstance His name is Jesus. Ananias experiences grace. Why do we have right believing in our church? Teaching the foundations of the goodness and the grace of God. Ananias prays for him. I love too also the first words that Saul hears from, um, from a follower of Christ is, read the text, calls him brother. He's saying, welcome to the family. <laughs> we love you. He prays for him, scales fall from his eyes. He's converted, called, he's commissioned. Can I give you a couple of things out of this passage? Look at the experience of those who, um, the men who are with Saul. Have you, have you ever been in the vicinity of something and completely missed what was going on? When I was in America, I was, in, uh, I was preaching in Miami of, of all cities, and I'm meeting with a pastor there, and we're in this lobby. We're eating, 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 and like an hour later, we realize that an NBA player by the name of Tony Parker is like literally 20 meters away from us. Those of you who don't know Tony Parker, played for the San Antonio Spurs, championship winner. And it was like, oh my goodness. We are in the vicinity of one of most America's most famous people and missed it. These men, look at their experience. The ones who were traveling with Saul on the road to Damascus. It says in Acts chapter 26, verse 13, at midday, Saul's giving an account of of his experience. He says, O king, along the road I saw a light from heaven brighter than the sun, watch this, shining around me and those who journeyed with me. They also experienced the light. And watch what he says in verse 14. And when we all had fallen to the ground, They experienced it. They were in the vicinity. In fact, Acts chapter 22, verse nine, about this Damascus Road experience says, my companions, Saul says, saw the light, but they did not understand the voice of him who was speaking to me. You can experience things about Christianity. You can experience the love of Christianity through God's people. But it's not about seeing the light and experiencing the light. Ultimately, you gotta see the Lord. 
They also fell on the ground. But we hear nothing of them surrendering. They also heard the sound, Saul tells us, but they didn't hear the voice of the one speaking. You can come to church. You can like the song. It's like that keyboard player, he's pretty good. That drummer, he's good looking. <laughs> he's experienced so much. But we're here because of the Lord. And we're here because of His voice. If you've been invited today, love that you're here. It's amazing, so fantastic. If you're watching online, it's great that you're watching online. But my question to you is, have you actually experienced the Lord? I love this passage because we should never underestimate the value of one person coming to Christ. At the same time, you got Peter preaching to thousands in Jerusalem. You've got Philip having a revival in Samaria. But you got one guy, Ananias, called by God to take care of a person, to look after him. Did Ananias, we hear his name, by the way, mentioned a little bit later on in the book of Acts, not much. But after that, he's forgotten. <laughs> Never really mentioned. Don't hear too many sermons about him, do you? But would Ananias ever thought, the man that I'm praying for, he's gonna transform the world and millions will draw strength and encouragement and he would write two thirds of the New Testament, the books of the New Testament. Do you ever think that you and I would be sitting here today drawing sh Don't underestimate your field of faith. Don't get so focused on the tens of thousands that you forget about the one, one, one child, one family member, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the ends of the earth. Your mum matters to God. Your dad matters to God. Your teenagers in your classroom, your friends, they matter to God. Your cousin who's got the heebie-jeebies matters to God, matters. One matters. Amen. What a transformation. What an experience with the Almighty God. I love the balances that we see in this passage. Can I show you a dynamic balance that's taken place? Watch this, there's a goodie. God is balanced. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Dynamic balance in the passage that we read this morning. Stay with me now. This is a woo, Holy Spirit, help me now. Saul experienced a public miracle, but he has a quiet meeting in a house with a man by the name of Ananias. A bright light from heaven and a voice from heaven was certainly dramatic. But the visit of Ananias was private. The hand of the Almighty God pushed Saul from his place of pride. But God used the hand of a man to gently pray for him. See the balance? One is public, one is private. You're in a public place today but God also gives you privacy. You're in a public place today. We're called a public place of worship, but God is so intensely private. He 
He's calling you to Himself. And He's saying, will you experience my love? Will you allow a gentle hand to be placed upon your shoulder in a moment of privacy? Amen. How good is God? You may not know Jesus as your personal friend, but in a moment, I'm gonna give you a place of privacy. The way that we're gonna do that, we're gonna close our eyes. I'm gonna pray a prayer. Your story may not be Saul's story, but the Word of God says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We need a Saviour. His name is Jesus. His love is reaching out to you today. And He's saying, don't harden your heart. Stop running. If you're watching online, right where you are, the love of God is reaching out to you as well. His grace and His mercy and His kindness, He's calling you home. In this moment of privacy, we're gonna pray a prayer. I'm gonna ask you from your heart, you don't need to shout it, you can if you want, <laughs> but you can say it quietly. Why? Because it's a private moment. And in the moment of privacy, as we pray this prayer, it's a simple prayer. It's not, it doesn't have a formula to it, by the way. It's just my way of encouraging you towards Jesus. As you repeat this prayer after me, in the moment of privacy, I'm gonna believe that God's love is gonna touch your heart. Watch this, that your past would be forgiven and that you would experience Him today. You may say, you don't know my past. Actually, I don't, but I know Saul's past and I guarantee you it wasn't as bad as him. The love of God is so rich, it's so wide, it's so deep, it's so great, so vast that He's calling you home. In the moment of privacy, can we bow our heads and close our eyes? Would you be able to repeat this prayer after me? Dear Jesus Christ, I believe in You. Come into my heart and be my Saviour. I receive your forgiveness, your love and complete acceptance. I am now set free from my past. I am now a child of God. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, or maybe you did a long time ago, in the moment of privacy, I'm gonna ask you to lift up your hand in a moment. The reason why, I wanna see who you are. I've got a couple of trusted Horizon Church people just also helping me as well. Uh, we don't wanna miss out on anyone. So on the count of three, if you prayed that prayer for the first time or you did a long time ago, would you be able to lift up your hand? Once I've seen your hand, you can put it straight back down. Are you ready? One, two, three. Lift it up nice and high. I'd love the opportunity to pray for you today. Come on, lift it up nice and high. Once I've seen your hand, you can put it straight back down. God bless you, I see your hand. Thank you for your honesty, that's fantastic. Is there anyone else? Once I've seen your hand, you can put it straight back down. Today's your day of victory. Today's your day of freedom. As we open up our heart, to Jesus Christ today. Come on, one person has put up their hand. Be bold, be courageous, be the second. Who else is there? Lift it up nice and high. I'd love the opportunity to pray for you today. Anyone else, anyone else? Come on, you can do it. You can do it in Jesus' Name. So good. I'm gonna bring our service to a close just in a moment. One final opportunity in Jesus' Name. So good. Well, church, in the moment of privacy, a single person 
opened up their heart to God. Can we just honour that person by just giving them a clap of encouragement? Now we said we were gonna pray. Are you ready to pray? Heavenly Father, thank you for all of those online who maybe opened up their heart. Thank you, Lord, for this amazing person here in the auditorium who opened up their heart. I declare blessing. I declare freedom. I declare breakthrough. I declare new beginnings in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. Don't forget your field of faith. Don't forget to fill it out. Don't forget to get those five names. If you, if you don't like the online bits and pieces, you can go to the reception desk. Pastor Alex, is that right? You can get your bit of paper. Write down your family members. Write down your loved ones. Doesn't matter how hard their heart is. We've seen in the Scriptures today that Jesus Himself can touch the hardest heart. God is growing a burden in our church for people who don't know Him. Time is short. The pace of the world and the changes that are taking place across the globe is extraordinary. Do not say there are four months and then comes the harvest. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes, look at the fields. They are already ripe unto harvest. Father, I thank you for the church. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing on horizon. May you burden our heart for souls. May we have supernatural experiences. I wanna pray for those as well. Lord, uh, friends, family members who are away from you, may they have a divine experience. You can reach the hardest heart. I declare and pray that in Jesus' wonderful name. And all of God's people said, amen. Amazing. Come on, let's thank God for that encouragement this morning. And I just really want to encourage, you know, for that person who this morning boldly said, you know, in my heart, I really want to open up my heart, my life and ask Jesus to show Himself to me, show His love to me. Uh, and for anyone else in the room who maybe didn't lift their hand, but you know in your heart that prayer was prayed with faith. You know, it's amazing how we just heard about a guy called Ananias who God brought along to stand beside somebody who was new to faith. And as a church, we are so passionate about standing with people who are new to faith. So if you are new to faith, even if you just have questions and you're on the journey of faith, we would love to connect with you. And we've actually got the Gospel of Mark, which is a gift we would love to give you. It's the story of Jesus. And we'd love to put that in your hands to pray with you and just to answer any questions you may have uh, while you're on this journey. So if that was you and you put your hand up, hopefully one of our team will come to you. And if you didn't put your hand up but you'd love one of these, come see myself or one of our team. We would love to stand with you on this journey. Hey, how amazing was that? Can we just honour Pastor Brad? Thank you, Pastor Brad. Such a great, great word. And I'm excited because part of my role here at church is to really encourage people in this season of faith. And we've got a baptism coming up as well. And so if you're new to faith, talk to your life group leader or one of our team. There's a lot going on in church. We'd love you to be a part of it. Well, we've had an amazing morning and an incredible morning dedicating some children and hearing from God's Word. And we're gonna have an amazing day. Uh, why don't we all just stand on up to our feet? We're gonna sing our way out of here. And as we do, if you're new, if you've come with a friend, I'd love to invite you personally to the guest lounge. I'll be there. This is a vet. This is Shelly down here. She'll be welcoming you. And we'd love to have you in the guest lounge. We've got a gift for you. And for everyone else, head out, grab your coffee, go across the road, enjoy the sun. Be blessed. We'll see you tonight at 6 p.m. Away my sin.